Wait, remember Edgar and Ellen? It was a short-lived Nickelodeon cartoon series that followed 12-year-old twin orphans that get up to some creepy and spooky shenanigans within their town, between pulling practical jokes on the residents of the towns or on themselves. They have devoted their time to make sure someone is always getting pranked. It has the perfect seasonal look that reels back in the early 2000s nostalgia, but the legacy of the show remains tucked away in the recesses of our minds as it would only run on TV from October 7, 2007 to October 30th, 2008. Falling into the category of other offbeat and recessed memory shows like Kappa Mikey, The Secret Show, Three Delivery, Corneal and Bernie, and many, many more. All stemming from their time on Nickelodeon's other channel, Nicktoons. So for today, and right now, tis the season, let's take a look at the history of this short-lived show, what it was, the origins of where it came from, what happened to it, and more. This is Edgar and Ellen. I have some plans for what we may do with that power, sister. If ever in your life you are faced with a choice, a difficult decision, a quandary, ask yourself, what would Edgar and Ellen do? And do exactly the contrary. Edgar and Ellen got its start not as a show, but as a book series. I know, I know. Calm down, reading is scary, but we have to talk about it. Starting off with a series of six books releasing from 2003 to 2007, the stories told follow Edgar and Ellen, twin kids who live alone in the small town of Nod's Limbs. With their parents being gone and leaving them as orphans, they live within a falling apart, rotten 13-story mansion on the edge of town that overlooks both a graveyard and a junkyard, in which they use said junkyard as a creative space to piece together different contraptions they use for pulling pranks. Rare Beasts, Taurus Trap, Undertown, Pets Revenge, High Wire, and Nod's Limbs all released over those four years gaining a decent sized following, especially from those who are already fans of series like Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. From the stories and the visuals accompanying the chapters, along with the cover of the books featuring the twins soullessly staring at you, these books completely had a style all their own while having nods and cues to something you'd envision from Tim Burton, as well as the literature and poems by Edgar Allan Poe, which, by the way, if you couldn't guess, is where they derived their names from. The series was written by Charles Ogden. You know, the great Charles Ogden. Oh, you haven't heard of him? That must be because he doesn't exist. Charles Ogden is a pen name, a fake name used instead of the author's real name, but here for Edgar and Ellen, it wasn't just one singular writer, but a group of writers who worked for Star Farm Productions to produce this book series aimed at children and young adults. The co-founder of Star Farm Productions, Rick Carton, would take up the role of being the artist to bring the world of Edgar and Ellen to life, giving aid to the stories with some dark and gothic illustrations, and the series would be published by Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. Later on, a sequel book series would release three volumes for more stories under the name of Edgar and Ellen Nodyssey, with the books Hot Air, Frostbites, and Split Ends. Adding on, a separate standalone book titled Mischief Manual, which takes the storytelling and places it in the perspective of Edgar and Ellen. But with the success of the books came the opportunities to move on to another medium. Slow and steady, Edgar and Ellen would be turned into 13 in total, two-minute animated shorts that would run on the Nicktoon network in between different shows from 2005 to 2006, which would eventually be turned into a full-fledged show the following year in 2007, with a total of 26 episodes spanning one season over the next year ending in 2008. Now, while the book side of things were great for Edgar and Ellen, why wasn't the show a main staple stay on Nicktoons? <laughs> you worry too much. Edgar, we're taking over the three-headed monster and hosting the Nicktoons Network Scarathon. Edgar and Ellen are back. These two are insane. Insanely awesome. The show itself would follow in the footsteps of the book series, expanding the stories and scope of these characters, their schemes and pranks, as well as the town that they live in. Between that, the twins also have to deal with the groundskeeper Heimertz, who, while being still a pretty creepy dude in the show, holds no weight to this image here from the books. Just nightmare fuel right here. They also have a pet, this one-eyed hairball thing. 
named Pet. When it comes to the shorts, there was a very creepy yet charmingly funny pace that kept them fairly interesting, and a nice breather in between the other shows you're already watching. The show, however, now having more time to work with for their storytelling, lost a bit of the impact the shorts had. Firstly, the visuals of the show were fine and passable, just your standard cheaper budgeted flash animation, but what it lacked were the aesthetics of the background detailing that made the world feel more bleak and deteriorating. Sure, the mansion is still unkept and has a creepy who can even live here aura about it, but in comparison to the trash ridden, fallen apart, and downright rotten feeling the shorts had for the mansion, there just was this overall lack of grime which made the books and the shorts feel a bit more special. But outside of the aesthetics of the show, is the show giving you substance within? Is it entertaining? Is there enough here to make a full-fledged show work? It's a very mixed bag. It does have some genuine fun moments, and it is fun to see what these two will come up with, and then at the same time get backfired with, but that's really the main crutch of the show. Sometimes this involves them somehow being heroes, or mainly just dealing with Stephanie, who is basically the main antagonist of the show. Which is weird to say, since Edgar and Ellen aren't any form of moral high ground characters to root for, but in comparison to the attitude of Stephanie, yeah, these two just seem like some harmless pranksters, but just disregard any harm that comes from those pranks, okay? She has a sinister side that is more explored in the books, more so than the show, but you still get some bits and pieces of that side of her based on her actions and how she treats others. Along with that, she is really smart and often uses her one-up on knowledge to her benefit, more specifically how she can basically manipulate anyone, almost anyone, the twins. Her tactics do not really do much else but annoy them. On a couple of occasions, however, they both, or one of the twins, ends up teaming up with her for a mutually beneficial reason. The dynamic between the twins and her can be entertaining, but at the same time, a bit of a redundancy episode to episode for the most part. Like I said, the character in the book series portrays her as a lot worse and more evil overall, which is why it's confused fans of the book series whether or not the cartoon takes place before the events of the book series, or maybe it's just its own continuity that is completely separate. I suggest treating both entities as their own separate thing, just utilizing the same basic plot points and characters. The biggest takeaway from the show, aside from it just not being as interesting as the source material, is the lack of charm. By that I mean the lightening up of characters not being able to be fully as creepy, evil, or weird. Instead of the dread you feel staring into the eyes of Edgar and Ellen on the book covers, you just get some quirky, offbeat characters. Stephanie isn't as much of a true monster as she can become in the books. Heimertz isn't as terrible terrifying as he is portrayed in the books. There is just so many chances that the show could have adapted a bit better to get somewhat closer to at least the feeling of these characters being similar. Nickelodeon was definitely hoping to capture a younger demographic with the show than the original book series popularity was capturing, which could possibly explain why it kind of feels the way it feels. Now while the show also did come out in Canada and was syndicated to other networks across the world, the show would still have to play ball with Nickelodeon. It faced similar problems to other shows before it like Invader Zim, with the only difference being that Invader Zim didn't lighten things up. It just found workarounds to please the network, but that's a story for my next video. As well as that show was made for Nickelodeon's flagship channel, rather than just being acquired by Nickelodeon, which is what this property was. Even though it was a Nicktoons original, it was still a temporary broadcasting deal. That's why in syndication, you'll see it being broadcasted on other channels. The show does have its moments where the characters do get in some funny situations, that lead to some pretty fun conclusions, but it never kept that consistency of always delivering that. The original shorts for the series did their best to keep a lot of what made fans of the books happy, and at least one really cool thing the series would do is have this ending two minute segment for each episode that was directly conceptualized by the fans of Edgar and Ellen. If you went to the Edgar and Ellen website, there was a spot where you could write who you were and suggest an idea, storyline, or some details you'd like to see for a short, and the ideas that would be picked would end up premiering at the end of an episode accompanied by the name and age of the person who came up with it. Edgar and Ellen would even speak to the creator of the idea through the short before going on to do whatever the suggestion was. It was a nice little component to the show that definitely found its charm aspect, but a two minute short at the end unfortunately doesn't help the two segments beforehand to have similar results. I'm not stupid! Don't miss the Edgar and Ellen special of the Club Twins, Saturday at 8.30. The network is ours once again! <laughs>
In the end, ultimately, Edgar and Ellen just didn't have the audience support tuning in like the books had had. And even though Nicktoons is the channel where Nickelodeon shows get pushed to to start digging their grave, Edgar and Ellen were the ones playing in that graveyard until they would eventually fall within the same graves dug out. Kind of. Again, it was acquired programming and labeled an original, but really, it had smaller second lives elsewhere. It's odd because there was an effort to push this show and promote it, unlike a lot of the other Just For Nicktoons shows. I mean, it had Target stores back in 2007 creating a special section to promote the books and the new TV show with a creepy house display with both of the characters all over it. Everything in that section would be plastered with either Edgar or Ellen's faces, or with anything in relation to the theme, along with some items for sale aside from the books that featured the characters on them. Heck, even Del Taco got on board the Edgar and Ellen train in 2008 for a Halloween celebration, even if it would be right around the show finishing its last few episodes. It spawned a board game, puzzles, and had a website that featured some fun pranks, cards, and birthday wishes you can send to others, and games. With the popularity of the books, there was some banking on this series doing well, and being a potential hit for this sister network to Nickelodeon. But yeah, it just never hit those heights. And you can claim low viewership, low interest, lack of outside tie-in merch aside from the books, but in the end, it really boils down to the show kind of being in this middle ground of not being too great or overly bad. It was extremely okay. The problem with that, however, is without being on either end of that, being so good you need more of it, or so bad it's fun to watch and laugh at the absurdity of it all, being in that middle ground can lead to a forgettable experience, or a less than satisfying revisit based on nostalgic curiosity. If anything, the shorts themselves are definitely the real standout here. And if you are to revisit Edgar and Ellen, the books and the shorts may be best to experience it again. Edgar and Ellen isn't an awful experience to get Get through or anything like that. It just feels a bit bland, especially in comparison to the source material being so heavily stylized. It feels like it lost bits of its identity because so. If it played more into those creepier detailings and the atmosphere followed suit, I think it would have been something a lot more special in the end. Ultimately, a limited budget does hold back the time and resources for that, so this is just a mere wish of what could have been done and not a shaming of it not being such. But let me know your thoughts on this show or the book series in general. Were you a fan of this property in the early and mid 2000s? Heck, are you still a fan all these years later? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe with notifications on for more content like this. Click the join button and become a member to help support the channel. Follow me on Twitter and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.